You're probably thinking, what is this guy doing? Making a $450 pre-built keyboard? Scott has finally lost his mind. And you know what? That's fair, because I thought that too when I was doing this. But then, this happened. After that, I thought, obviously the world is upside down when pre-built keyboards can become nicer than some customs. Well, welcome back to the channel and let's see what drove me to this madness. First of all, this entire thing started with the humble IQNix L80 Cosmic Traveler. I know, that's a mouthful. You're probably thinking, didn't I see this somewhere before? You sure have, you saw the original IQNix L80. If you recall, I said in the last video, buy this one for the looks, because that was its main strong suit. The original L80 was okay, but it came with north facing PCB, so so switch choices, OEM caps with so so legends, co-star stabilizers, and some odd design choices that actually took away from the potential. It also sounded like this. But then, IQNix actually listened to the reviewers and fixed all that. The new L80 now comes with south-facing LED, crisp cherry profile caps, options for TTC switches, and cherry-style stabilizers. And the result? The other reviewers were absolutely correct. The stock L80 Cosmic Traveler is the perfect pre-built keyboard out of the box. Take a listen. So I first pulled this keyboard out of the box, typed on it and said, review done, perfect pre-built, next. Then I thought, wait a minute, if this thing has the perfect platform, can I push a pre-built to a custom level? Not just a bad custom, like actually a good custom level. So this was a start down the path of, let's see how much I can push this. The first thing I did was took the case apart. And as others have mentioned, it's not the easiest to do due to the plastic clips. But if you do have one of these, it's actually very easy. Then I started to really notice some of the changes that were made. First of all, the plate dampener is now free and no longer glued to the plate. Then they got rid of all those little rubber bump-ons on the plate as well. Those little rubber bump-ons were causing the plate to ping and it just sounded bad. Then yes, the glorious cherry style stabs. Yes, these are plate mount, but I will show you that plate mount doesn't equal bad anymore because of certain novel keys. As mentioned, the PCB is brand new. It's now south facing and has this nice blue color instead of the generic green. Still have nice per key RGB and KO hotspot sockets. It also takes 5 pin switches. The list just goes on and on for this keyboard. All was well until I got to the bottom. Overall, not a huge deal breaker, but the lowercase remains largely unchanged, with the two huge battery packs and the standard squishy foam to fill in the vast empty shell. Here, take a look. The space down here is very cavernous, to say the least. So I got an idea. I had a viewer recommend to me to check out Plastocene. It's also known as Plastilina. It's a sculpting clay that is suspended in wax and oil, so it never hardens. It's not the colorful polymer clay that you bake and you harden. Don't use that stuff on plastic, it actually melts plastic. Plastilina is the stuff that Gumby is made of, if you know who Gumby is. And this stuff is heavy. So I filled the entire underside with it. It took a bit of time, but it wasn't terribly hard to do. Also, now the keyboard weighs a million pounds. Actually, not that much, but it's much heavier. I'll tell you the exact weight later. Then I put two layers of blue masking tape under the PCB for the tape mod, and I put the entire thing back together and I went to grab some premium parts. Speaking of premium parts, I want to do a quick shout out to Tim and his site shopmac.com. As mentioned before, ShopMac is a site that helps to aggregate all types of keyboard and keyboard components into a one-stop platform so that you don't have to go and search everywhere. It hosts pretty much everything you need from switches to keycaps to parts and even keyboards. What's new is that ShopMag now features the Keyboard Builder. The Keyboard Builder is essentially a parts picker tool that helps you choose various different components to put together an entire keyboard. What's nice is that it shows you sites and their prices so you could cross shop without going to these sites individually. Once you have all your parts picked out, you can save the build and share it with others as well. Tools like this is great for both beginners and enthusiasts alike, so go check out shopmac.com and support another keyboard dude. So with the keyboard back together, I grabbed some box ink blacks. I was very impressed by these recently, so I thought it would be the perfect fit for this keyboard. They're smooth, they're deep, and just look amazing. 
I also spring swap these with the 65g TX long springs for that snappy response. For stabilizers, I grab some Novel Keys plate mounts. If you want the best plate mounts, these are it right here. I have absolutely no affiliation with Novel Keys at all. These are just really good stabs for the plate mounts, so I strongly recommend. Finally, for keycaps, I grabbed some Camillo MT3 caps from Drop. The colorway on these were just the perfect match for the white and blue theme of the L80. After all this, yes, it was not a cheap board, but I think it's a fantastic looking one. Honestly, the MT3 caps are just perfect for this design, and yeah, I was so satisfied with it how it turned out. Plus, all of that plastilina, I used about 1.5 pounds of it. So now this L80 weighs about 5 pounds fully built. Yes, you heard that right. This is a 5 pound plastic keyboard. It actually weighs as much as my D65 with a brass weight inside. Weight is not everything, but for the most part, a heavier board does provide a more stable platform. So let's break this down. The L80 Cosmic Traveler was a total of $209. Then the pack of Gateron Box Ink Blacks were about $75. Bucks. The Novel Key Stabs were $20 and the MT3 caps were 120. Finally, springs, films, and miscellaneous were about $20. So all in all, this thing was about $450. So you got a quick glimpse of how this $450 pre-built keyboard turned out. But what does it sound like on a full typing test? Let's check it out. So what is the point of this? Am I trying to tell people to stop building customs and just go pre-build? Nope, that's not the case at all. However, what I'm trying to say is that if you're getting into this hobby and a full custom is a bit intimidating or overwhelming, I mean, after all, there's 40,000 different switches out there. Start with something like the IQNix L80 Cosmic. It's a great board out of the box. Then as you get more familiar, you can start swapping things out. Add to it, try out different switches, different caps, experiment with different mods. Eventually the stock L80 will evolve into something like this. And I can tell you, this thing will rival many customs out there in terms of typing as well as its feature set. I mean, come on, this thing can go full wireless Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz if you want. So as usual, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll have more content for you in the future. Help this channel grow by subscribing. My sub rate is still only around 22% and would really love your support. Thanks.